Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I mean, this recruiting thing, and this is probably one of the reasons, there's there's many, but there's probably one of the reasons that I'm not, you know, coaching college football right now. But, you know, I'll never forget this. When I was a real young uh, first-time head coach, I can't remember if it was my second year, third year, first year, but I I went back. Um, it might have been my first year because we went back to this, um, the Paul Bear Bryant Awards, I think it was, and um, and Barry Switzer was there, and they were giving him a Lifetime Achievement Award, and he brought like 30 players with him. And they were, you know, Billy Sims and all these dudes were on the stage with him. And he just, he made this comment. He said, listen, <laughs> you, you might outcoach me, but you're not going to outrecruit me. <laughs> and, look, and I brought my, 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 uh, my guys to show you what I'm talking about. And so I, I just remember that. Like, it just resonated so much with, you know, it is about the guys. It's about getting the guys that fit you. It's about recruiting. And. I think, you know, one of the things that did bother me when I came to Seattle was, uh, yeah, that's not going to work. The OKG thing's not going to work here. Uh, you know, you, you know, can he recruit at this? And it is different. Don't get me wrong. Like, it, it was a different recruiting strategy. It was different from Boise State to Washington. But, I mean, I thought we really recruited really well at Boise State that's why we won so many games. It wasn't all this great coaching. It started with great players. Mm -hmm. And then when we came to Washington, you know, it was the same thing. It was like, you got to have the players. And I always felt like we were, and then you got to get the players aligned and do those type of things. And there was still like this, OKG thing that's not going to work. And I look at these guys that went to the combine, you know, on this list. And I can't even start with Buda Baker. Like that's the poster child of OKG, our kind of guy. And then I go down this list, and it's like, yeah, there's 13 of these dudes that went to this combine, and you can make a case that every one of them is like fits that mold. That not only are they good players, they're really good people. Coach, I hear you talking. I hear the the passion in your voice, and I hear you say, you know, there's a bunch of reasons why I'm not coaching college football, and I think I understand it. We've talked about it before, and maybe this question's out of line. Feel free to tell me that you just don't want to answer it. But why aren't you coaching NFL football? That, no, that's a good question. And the really cool thing about my life right now, Salk, is that um, you can ask me anything, and I'll say, because I don't care anymore. <laughs> I don't have to, you know, I just don't. So I'm good. The reason I'm not, uh, and if I was coaching, it probably would be in the NFL, but I just don't want to live my life that narrow, mm -hmm. in that narrow of a lane. That's the best way. Like, there's other things that I want to do. I want to be involved with football. I want to be in involved with coaches. I want to be involved with the leaders um, that run, that are involved, whether it's at the NFL level or at the college level, I really enjoy that. And so I'm able to do some of that, um, you know, on a consulting basis. And I really, really get a lot of joy and fulfillment helping these guys, you know, walk this journey that is a tough, tough journey right now. Mm -hmm. But for, for me to jump back into it, it's 24-7. 65 yeah. and i just at this point don't want to live my life in that narrow of a lane smart we haven't even talked to you and i don't think i've had really even seen your opinion on this so uh, let's land on that coaching thing and land on a guy that's been a lifetime college coach he's found success everywhere that he's been especially offensively he's got an o-line background he called plays the last two years for the huskies at a very high level he goes to bama for about 30 days <laughs> And then he says, uh, ah, you know what? Let me let me follow Mike McDaniel. Let me come Mike McDonald. Let me come back to Seattle. What do you think of the move with Ryan Grubb? Oh uh, man, I think it's what an opportunity, right? <laughs> this is once in a lifetime. Not only to be in the NFL and to be able to make that jump as a coordinator in college to a coordinator in the NFL and never have been there before. That is super rare. Yeah. And so I think, you know, what a what an awesome opportunity. And then to be able to get to stay in Seattle because I know what he think about Seattle and loves it. So what a really, really cool opportunity. And you never know, like until somebody goes through the fire of how, um, you know, they're going to do like that. The best predictor is, you know, past history. And in terms of call and play, there was no question in my mind. He was the best call play caller in college football last year. Um, no question. And watching him really two years. 
how explosive and the plays that they were calling to make it explosive. Now, how that translates exactly into the NFL, I think it's going to translate well. Is it going to be, is it going to look like the University of Washington's offense? No, I think we all know that. But I know this guy is really smart and he's constantly evolving. And they're going to put together a really cool package that I think the Seattle um, fans is going to be really excited about. Is there going to be a learning curve? And all? Yes, it is for everybody. Every year is a new learning curve. If you're not learning and growing, you know, we all know you're going nowhere. And so I'm excited about this. And the fact that you have Scott Huff, you know, his right-hand man, that old line coach, the old line coach and the offensive coordinator have to be joined at the hip. And they have to think alike. And so much of this package of what they'll put together will come through doing coach as well. And I think that's one of the things that people miss is like, you know, sometimes the head coach gets, you know, a lot of credit. And sometimes that offensive coordinator gets a lot of credit. And you don't hear about some of these other guys. And probably the one, and, and Brock, you know this better than anyone, there's, there's a cult in the NFL about O-line coaches. You know, there, there's just – those guys in those 32 teams, there is a unique – there's the, all these assistants, and then there's the O-line assistants. Assistance. And these guys are some of the best teachers in the world. And I think it's really cool that Scott Huff is now part of that.